Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Bon bonjour. Ni hao. Buenos dias. Salam alaikum. Dobre utro. And I saw what Portuguese is being interpreted. Bon dia. I'm honored to open the fourth United Nations Global Compact Leaders Summit. I'm inspired to see such a diverse group of leaders today from business, civil society, and governments, and philanthropists. You are here because you understand that change and progress are possible with a vision and ambition. The message of the introductory video and our guest speaker, Dr. Trent, is that Individual actions count, and I'm deeply inspired and moved by what Dr. Trent said and her experience. Your actions count. We need you to be architects of a sustainable future for all of us. I'm particularly happy uh, to see a large representation of uh, women uh, today, but I want to see more women sitting in the boardrooms. Women's empowerment is essential to sustainable development and stable progressive societies. We must commit to breaking the glass ceiling from the classroom to the boardroom. We need all actors working together to pursue a sustainable path that links economic growth social justice, and environmental stewardship. We live in volatile times. Great advances towards eradicating poverty and disease point to what can be achieved when we work together. But inequality persists and in many cases is growing. Climate change threatens and the environmental base for future progress is becoming ever more fragile. Sustainable development presents many challenges, but I'm confident we can meet them. In my lifetime, I have seen changes and progresses. I grew up in a country, as you know very well, in a country devastated by a Korean War. I knew hunger. My school was a bare earth under a tree. When there, it rained, there was no class. My homework was lit by candlelight. Now, when I visit developing countries and meet many school children and heads of government, I can tell them firsthand that better things can happen and better things, better future lie ahead of them. But such a change does not happen by itself. It must be pursued with a vigor. And by all of society, it must be pursued by vision and strong determination of all the leaders, government, and particularly business leaders who have the capacity to renovate, innovate and transform this society. We cannot accept a rising tide where only float only some boats and leaves many to drown. That is where you come in. My appeal to you today is to act for the common good and get others to join you. This is the morally correct thing to do. And it is a smart choice too. Ladies and gentlemen, the sustainable journey that we all need to take is in everybody's best interest. Even if it may sometimes demand short-term sacrifice, nobody can benefit from catastrophic climate change or rampant unemployment and the social unrest that comes with it. Prosperous, stable societies and a healthy planet are the bedrock of political stability, economic growth, 
and flourishing new markets. Everyone has a role to play here. Our global compact is working to bring business to the table as a key partner. It embodies the spirit of shared responsibility that is essential for achieving a better world. At the compact launch in 2000, a few companies consider their impact on the environment and on society. Now we have more than 8,000 participating companies and 4,000 civil society signatories in 145 countries. This is significant. We have 101 country networks supporting a growing global corporate responsibility and movement. CEOs increasingly see a direct link uh, between corporate sustainability and the bottom line. Human right abuses, poor working conditions, discrimination, environmental degradation, and corruption, whether in direct operation or the supply chains, are a threat to morale, reputation, long-term investment, and the growth prospect. Modern communication technology, combined with growing demands for transparency, make it harder for companies to flout laws and ignore a public opinion. Companies that take their responsibilities to people and the planet seriously will increasingly be in the vanguard. That is why the investment community is looking closely at sustainability. And factors like environmental stewardship, labor standards, social responsibility, and good governance. In short, business can no longer ignore its social and environmental responsibilities. We need it to help build sustainability through the marketplace. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished CEOs, your companies have already committed to these principles. Most of you are reporting on your progress. But I want you to go further. The first, I want you to see what more you can or should be doing in your own operations and your relationship with trading partners. Second, I want you to act on your commitment by helping to swell the ranks of the Global Compact so we reach a critical mass. Third, I want you to consider how to use your expertise and resources to help to promote the changes we need for a truly sustainable future. We need you to advance innovations and forge collaborations that can have transformative impacts on some of the toughest issues we face. I'm firmly committed to the power of partnerships, working with the business and all key st stakeholders to make progress on UN objectives. The immediate challenge is achieving the Millennium Development Goals. Much changed since the Millennium Declaration in 2000. There were skeptics whether these Millennium Development Goals will really make a progress. After 13 years, after 13 years, we have seen tremendous uh, progresses. Even though the private sector was identified for the first time as a strategic player in reaching UN goals, there was no clear role for business in the agenda. Yet, business has had a major hand in reducing extreme poverty, combating diseases like HIV AIDS, malaria, and in advancing solar, wind, and other modern energy sources. Now, the 2015 deadline for the Millennium Development Goals is fast approaching. We have a little more than 800 days. 
government, the United Nations, and all the stakeholders are working hard to accelerate action to meet the existing commitment. Your support, your commitment is essential. Member states are also working to define the twin pillars of a more sustainable world. That is a new, single, and coherent post-2015 sustainable development agenda. A new universal legal climate agreement by the end of 2015. So we have three major challenges and duties. First, accelerate MDG until 2015. Then second, define post-2015 development agenda, sustainable development, and agree to a legally binding treaty by, on climate change by 2015. Those are three priorities I ask you to commit yourself. The private sector will be integral. The post-2015 period presents a historic opportunity. Perhaps for the first time in human history, we have the tools to eradicate extreme poverty. In my report, A Life of Dignity for All, which I submitted to the General Assembly last week, or ahead of next week, Thursday's a special event on the MDGs, I call for a single, coherent, and ambitious post-2015 agenda, articulated by one concise set of inspirational goals, as Sustainable Development Goals, which will be called SDGs. This is a universal agenda. Poverty eradication must be the highest priority, with the sustainable development at the core. We must also address the challenges of climate change. This will require urgent action towards a new dynamic of sustainable energy and job-rich, low-carbon growth. We will need business to play a leading role. Companies can move from bystanders to builders. Today, I am pleased to table an important report from the Global Compact on Building a Business Engagement Architecture for the Post-2015 Agenda. While this architecture will need to grow and evolve as governments set their directions on climate and a post-2015 development framework, this is a very important starting point. This architecture is designed to drive and scale up corporate actions to directly advance United Nations goals. It connects the dots in the ever-growing field of responsible business initiatives, standards, and certifications. And it calls on corporate leaders to work together on an entirely new scale collaborating and co-investing to share risks and realize opportunities. The architecture report is also an open call to organizations, initiatives, and networks working globally to engage societies. I am pleased that the World Business Council for Sustainable Development and the Global Reporting Initiative have joined us. Uh, today, as part of this effort, we will launch three new issue platforms on education, business for peace, and sustainable agriculture. We have seen how powerful uh, such collaborative efforts can be. Our caring for climate and women's empowerment principles are the world's largest business action platform in their fields. These platforms and the entire direction suggested in the report can make a significant contribution to my priority objective to bolster the ability of the United Nations 
to advance our goals and mandates through a comprehensive multi-stakeholder partnership architecture. Your Majesty, distinguished business leaders, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the Global Compact has helped to generate a major shift in corporate mindset in just one decade. Enlightened leaders are making sustainability a core part of business strategy. Today, I ask all of you to be architects of a better world. What once was a call to the founding members of the United Nations is now a rallying cry to business and civil society leaders everywhere. Help us to respond to the urgency of our global challenges and build a better tomorrow. Let us shape our future by ourselves with a strong commitment and right vision, global vision. And let us work together with the United Nations, with all members of Global Compact to make this world better for all. And I count on your leadership, your commitment, and I thank you very much.